Uh, welcome to the first session um, for worm specific talks. Uh, I should have brought my notes up here. I, this is one of the genomics and gene regulation sessions and new technologies. Uh, I want to go ahead and get started on time uh, because we have a full session today. Um, I want to remind people to turn off their cell phones, put them on silent, and I think we're going to go ahead and get started with the first talk. So our first speaker is Sevench Erkan, and she's going to, if we can find the title of her talk, X Specific Targeting of the C. Elegans Dosage Compensation Complex. Okay. Thank you, Harold, and I thank the organizers for giving me a chance to present our work today. And I'm going to talk about the X specific targeting of the C. elegans dosage compensation complex. Um, in eukaryotic organisms, multiple genes within a large chromosomal domain can be coordinately regulated. And such regulation uh, examples are the Hox gene clusters, heterochromatin silencing, and X chromosome dosage compensation. <clears throat> While these processes are essential for animal development, we still don't understand clearly how these chromosomal domains specified and targeted by gene regulatory complexes. Um, X chromosome dosage compensation is an excellent model to study specification of chromosomal um, uh, domains for gene regulation because uh, in many different organisms and model organisms, a specific gene regulatory complex is specifically targeted to only the X chromosome to regulate transcription in one of the two sexes. Briefly, this occurs differently in different animals, in humans, <clears throat> this is done by uh, inactivation of one of the X chromosomes to uh, uh, inactivation of one of the X chromosome in females. In flies, it's done by activation of the single X chromosome by twofold in males. And in C. elegans, this is done by <clears throat> down regulation of both X chromosomes in hermaphrodites. <clears throat> Sorry. <laughs> okay. So while the strategies are very different, there are common themes in uh, domain-wide gene regulation. And these common themes is the strategy of targeting a large chromosomal domain in two steps. One is the re specific recruitment of the protein complex to the domain for regulation. And second, the spreading of the complex to the chromosome linear linearly. So in flies, this is done by the recruitment of the fly dosage compensation complex, MSL, to chromatin entry sites, about 200 across the uh, X chromosome. In worms, this is, uh, the recruitment is done by the dosage compensation complex going into recruitment elements on the X rex sites, about 100 of them along the 17 megabase X chromosome. So these recruitment sites are defined by uh, uh, short uh, DNA sequence motifs. In flies, it looks like this. And in worms, it looks uh, like this. <clears throat> and the motifs are important for specific recruitment. These motifs are at the recruitment sites. And if you mutate them, you abolish recruitment. However, the motifs do not explain the specificity of recruitment because these motifs are also present on the autosomes, in fact, there are hundreds of copies of these uh, motifs present on the autosomes, but there they do not recruit the dosage compensation complexes. This context-dependent recruitment is not specific to X chromosome dosage compensation. In many other systems, the transcription factors only bind to a very small percentage of their target sequences. So we do not still understand how the specificity of transcription target factor targeting and uh, protein recruitment occurs. So we wanted to address this in C. elegans using X chromosome dosage compensation. In C. elegans, the core of the dosage compensation complex is a condensing complex. And that condensing complex interacts with five other proteins, mainly for specific recruitment to the X chromosome. And it has been shown uh, by the Meyer group that uh, the different members of the dosage compensation complex localizes to the X chromosome shown here in immunofluorescence studies. So 
Here is a, a, a high resolution view of the dosage compensation complex binding. Uh, what we have here is the uh, um, a CHIPSIC uh, uh, binding profile of one of the dosage compensation complex members. And what you can see is that the binding profile reflects this recruitment and spreading uh, targeting. What you see is very sh sharp uh, and high binding peaks uh, that correspond to recruitment elements on the X, and these smaller peaks of spreading that are enriched at gene promoters and enhancers. Um, and the, the complex is specific to the X chromosome. So if you look at under these recruitment sites, you see the motif. Uh, Meyer lab showed that if you mo mutate the motif, the recruitment is abolished. So the motif is important for recruitment. However, it's only threefold enriched on the X chromosome. So we asked, are the X chromosomal motifs more accessible than the autosomal motifs? And that in actually increases the specificity of the recruitment of the complex to the X. So here is a, a histone H3 chipseq uh, enrichment across the uh, motifs on the autosomes and the X chromosome. And what you can see here is that the bound motifs on the X chromosomes indeed have a more accessible chromatin structure around them compared to unbound motifs on the X chromosome or the, uh, um, uh, the unbound motifs on the autosomes, although you see some accessible motifs here. However, this kind of experiment doesn't tell you if the open uh, chromatin around motifs is a cause or a consequence of the dosage compensation complex binding. And to address that, what we did is to um, use a, a mutant of the dosage compensation complex subunit, SDC2, in which the dose, rest of the dosage compensation complex uh, uh, does not bind to the X chromosome. So here's the CHIP-seq analysis at the top recruitment sites on the X chromosome. You can see where the motifs are. You can see the different uh, dosage compensation complex subunits binding. And here is the histone H3 uh, CHIP-seq data across a 600 base pair window around the motifs. And when you mutate SDC2, what you can see is that the nucleosome occupancy of the bound motifs actually increases. And this data suggests that perhaps the lower uh, nucleosome occupancy at the motif is a consequence of DCC binding and may not explain uh, ex specific recruitment uh, of the complex. So then we need to figure out what factor then uh, determines uh, specificity to the X. And to do that, we ask this question. Can a well-defined REX site recruit the DCC to uh, autosomes? So for this, we used a uh, initially um, uh, well-defined uh, recruitment site, which is a 400 base pair DNA element that contains two copies of the motif. It's called a recruitment element on the X1. Uh, and it was shown to recruit the complex on multi-copy extra chromosomal arrays. So what we did is we took this single copy Rex1 and inserted it onto chromosome 2, and we looked at whether or not it can recruit the complex. And interestingly, what we saw is that compared to the endogenous site where Rex1 recruits the complex as an, a single insertion on chromosome 2, it was not able to recruit. So this was interesting. Then we asked, what if you take the same Rex1 and now insert it in an ectopic site on the X chromosome where it normally doesn't uh, bind to the DCC? So in that case, what we saw is that interestingly, actually, if you put that the same element on the X, now it works just fine. And it's able to recruit the complex ectopically to the X chromosome. I told you that. Um, so this data suggests that X uh, recruitment element on the X, Rex1, can work on the X but cannot work on the autosome. But I told you that the Rex1 is capable of recruiting the complex to extra chromosomal arrays outside the context of the X chromosome. But one difference is that on extra chromosomal arrays, Rex1 is in multi-copy. So we said, OK, perhaps if you increase the copy number of the X chromosome at Rex1, then you can recruit the DCC. So we did that by um, bombarding uh, multiple copies of a linear, linearized plasmid containing Rex1. We have Rex1 in single copy on chromosome 2. 
in three copies on chromosome three and in eight copies on chromosome one. And what we can see is that with increasing uh, numbers of copies, the ability of the Rex1 to recruit the DCC increases. And this suggests some synergy between the Rex1 elements uh, uh, in multi multiple copies in that the, perhaps the different Rex1s in the, in the multi-copy insertions are cooperatively recruiting the DCC to the autosomal side. So this suggests that perhaps the reason why Rex1 can work on the X and not autosomes is that on the X chromosome, it can cooperate with other recruitment sites so that they can recruit the DCC together. So such cooperative recruitment here in this context would be across 7 kb or so distances. But on the X chromosome, the, the d distances between the recruitment sites can vary between 0.1 to 1 megabase. However, the Meyer lab using high c showed that the recruitment sites on the X chromosomes are actually close to each other in the three-dimensional space so that the basis of the recruitment could be physical interactions between the Rex sites. So, uh, the, uh, uh, the, ba the basis of cooperation could be physical interaction. So then we ask if there's cooperation, what's the consequences of deleting a recruitment site on the X chromosome? Um, so we did that. The first thing that we did is we deleted Rex1 on the X. And what's plotted here is the binding in the deletion strain compared to the wild type strain and normalized against, the, uh, against a, a, a very high um, efficiency recruitment site so that on the Y axis you can see the percentage of change of binding upon the recruitment site deletion. So what you can see here is that um, um, these, uh, the binding of the complex around the Rex1 has de decreased about 10%. And this decrease is significant because we did a test looking at the regions of the X chromosome where we see a significant depletion, and that is indicated here with a pink, uh, pink color. So, we said, okay, that, that's nice. Uh, how about we uh, delete another Rex1 on the right end of the chromosome? And what you can see here is now that the, 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 the um, binding has reduced even more significantly, about 30%, uh, because we deleted the, the rightmost Rex, uh, Rex41. And then I get greedy, so I said, okay, let's delete the leftmost Rex1. And what happens is you see the opposite, where you now see that the, the recruitment to the left end of the X is now reduced. Interestingly, we also see a significant reduction um, around uh, um, Rex1 when you delete Rex40, so suggesting that perhaps the cooperation could be between specific recruitment sites on the X chromosome, and that could relate to the three-dimensional um, interactions between Rexes. And here is a, a, a negative control data where we do not expect a lot of changes in the DCC binding, uh, uh, validating our analysis approach. Okay, so now our idea is that we have uh, recruitment uh, elements cooperating with each other to recruit the DCC, and from these sites, the DCC can spread onto the X chromosome, creating that, um, creating a chromosomal domain for repression. And so in eukaryotes, uh, we have these recruitment elements that uh, basically can act to recruit uh, the uh, protein complexes to large chromosomal domains. And in some cases, but not all, we also have boundary elements to, to restrict the spreading of the protein complexes, basically specifying these large chromosomal domains. And our data suggests that long-range cooperativity between uh, the boundary elements or recruitment elements within themselves would allow um, robust and specific targeting without the necessity of evolving and maintaining domain-specific DNA sequence motifs, which is the case that we see in many types of uh, uh, domain-wide um, Gene regulation systems, including fly dosage compensation, C. elegans dosage compensation, polycom elements, um, etc. With that, I'd like to thank the people who have done the work. This work has been led by a uh, bright graduate student, Sarah, who is here and presenting a poster uh, today, with the help of a technician, Lara, and a postdoc, Anna. And uh, with that, I can take any questions. Hi, 
Hi. Uh, when you did the ectopic insertion on the autosome, I'm wondering if you looked in uh, and didn't see it work alone, but did it multi-copy. I mean, did you try different sites? Because there are sites that resemble rec sites on these autosomes. So, I mean, it could be very much context dependent whether it works or not. Um, we did try a few different places. Um, we are still doing the experiments to see how much recruitment is there. But I'm not aware of um, places on the autosomes that may act like recruitment sites. Um, we have looked very hard to see if there is any uh, property of these motifs on the autosomes um, that might help them to be more amenable to recruitment, and we can't find it. So we want to summarize these results in a, uh, soon, um, but we, we, we didn't find anything, any place like that. So once you recruit GCC to the autosome with these eight copies, do you ever see spreading? Yeah, we do spreading. We have a very good, we have an excellent evidence for spreading, which is we use these X chromosome to autosome fusions to see that the dosage compensation complex spreads into the autosome. And the spreading is amazing. It can go one to three megabases into the autosomes and spreading is really high. In the eight copy insertion, the spreading is puny. There is spreading. We see about uh, spreading 100 KB on each side, but the amount of spreading is much less than the spreading that occurs in the X to autosome fusions, suggesting that not only autosomes don't like recruitment, they also don't support spreading. Thank you. It seems like... Um, oh, sorry. You do you want to stop? Yeah. Okay. Sorry. I'll ask you later. <laughs> Sorry, Susan. <laughs>